Hi, I am Dr. Sakim Mansoor, and this is my channel, Learning Anatomy. And uh, as you know, I'm running a series of uh, lectures on the clinical of the spinal cord. And uh, now I have taken up on the destructive spinal cord syndromes. And today's topic is the uh, central cord syndrome. And you know that when neurological impairment is identified after the disappearance of the spinal shock, it can often be categorized into one of the following syndromes, right? So destructive spinal cord syndromes. First of all, Brown's cord syndrome or hemisection of the cord, already uploaded long time ago. Anterior cord syndrome, right? This is uh, already uploaded and today is a central cord syndrome. And very soon I will discuss with you the complete cord cross-section syndrome. So clinical findings usually indicate a combination of lower motor neuron injury at the level of the destruction of the spinal cord and the upper motor neuron injury for those segments below the level of the destruction. This is a general rule. So what happens in the central cord syndrome CCS? It is most often caused by hyperextension of the cervical region of the spine, right? So mostly the central cord syndrome is uh, uh, occurring in the neck region of the cervical region. So the cord is pressed on anteriorly by the vertebral bodies and posteriorly by the bulging of the ligamentum flavum, causing damage to the central region of the spinal cord, right? So radiographs of these injuries often appear normal because no fracture or dislocation has occurred. You can see in the picture, right, this one. This is the central region of the cord, spinal cord, and there is the damage occurring here, right? So the following characteristic features are seen clinically after the period of spinal shock is over in central cord syndrome. So number one, what happens here? This is the uh, shown you already. This is the central cord syndrome. Bilateral lower motor neuron paralysis seen in the segment, segment of the lien and the muscular atrophy, right? Bilateral lower motor neuron lien paralysis. This is due to the damage to the neuron in the anterior gray columns. Now you see these are the anterior gray columns here you see and they are damaged and uh, so what will happen um, damage to the nerve roots of the same segment also as well and have the crest is the you know bilateral or motor neuron paralysis right of course the muscular atrophy will result here is mentioned and then next a bilateral spastic paralysis occurs below the level of the lien with the characteristic sacral sparing. The sacral uh, segments are not characteristically damaged. Why uh, I have uh, discussed this picture already in uh, some of the previous lectures on the normal neuroanatomy of the spinal cord, lamination of these tracts, this lateral corticospinal tract and the spinothalamic tracts. So you look at that. Lower limb fibers are affected less than the upper limb fibers. Why? As the descending fibers in the lateral corticospinal tracts are laminated, right? This is the lateral corticospinal tract and these are the laminated tracts. And uh, this is uh, the cervical region is the most medial thoracic is next to that lateral and, uh, and this is the lumbar region next lateral to that and sacral is uh, mo lateral most. So with the upper limb fibers located medially and lower limb fibers located laterally, right? This is the upper limb fiber cervical. They are located, you know, medially. And these are the lower limb fibers sacral. These are uh, located laterally. So this is the reason. So of the characteristic sacral sparing in the bilateral spastic paralysis. Next is the bilateral loss of pain, temperature, pressure, and uh, sensations, and light touch below the level of the lien with characteristic sacral sparing, right? What tracks I'm talking to you with right now? It would be these spinothalamic tracks. Here, these are the spinothalamic tracks. These were the lateral corticospinal tracks here, right? So here, what happens is similarly like that. So here, this is the you know spinothalamic tract, lateral and anterior. So here, uh, these is this is the lamination of the tract shown. This is cervical. This is thoracic. This is lumbar. This is a sacral. And here also the cervical uh, portion of the portion for the upper limb is occurring. 
you know most medially so first it as this is a central cord syndrome here you see this so these will be affected first of all and uh, these are sacral are at the periphery they are spared so that is characteristic sacral sparing uh, you can i will read it out live from here because the ascending fibers in the lateral and anterior spinothalamic tracts are also laminated with the upper limb fibers located medially and the lower limb fibers located laterally the upper limb fibers are more susceptible to damage than the lower limb fibers i talked to already yes of course the injury starts here going there outside and right these are the cervical fibers the spinothalamic tracts they are the you know located more medially so first of all they would be damaged the most vulnerable to damage so the clinical scenario of a patient with a history of hyperextension injury of the neck presenting with sensory and motor tract injuries involving principally the upper limb would strongly suggest central cord syndrome spinning of the lower part of the body how can, could you demonstrate that the body if the lower part of the body is spared the sacral spearing that the presence of the perianal sensation good tone of the anal sphincter and the ability to move toes slightly in patient whose damage is caused by edema of the spinal cord alone the prognosis is often very good a mild central cord syndrome that consists only of paresthesia of the upper part of the body and some mild arm and hand weakness can occur so in the last the other causes of central cord syndrome this is one of them is the syringomyelia uh, discussed and explained uh, uh, beautifully in my one of my previous very previous lectures and in uh, three four lectures before uh, this is syringomyelia so right this is uh, and the last this is the other cause of the central cord syndrome is the intramedullary tumors i thank you very much and request you to I um, mean, be tuned to my channel by pressing the bell icon, subscribing it, and sharing it. Do support me by I mean, subscribing my channel and commenting down below and sharing. Thank you very much. Take good care of you. Bye.